What's up, copy chiefs? If you're listening to my voice right now, I bet you'd like to know how you can join Copy Chief. And if you go to the website right now, you'll see that there is a waiting list. But guess what? I've got something special for you for being a Copy Chief Radio listener. When you go to copychiefradio.com right now, you'll be able to skip the line and join us all inside Copy Chief. So head on over to Copy Chief Radio right now and you can skip the line and join us. This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. This is part two of the episode we started last week with Abby Woodcock. Welcome to another edition of Copy Chief Radio. Here's Kevin. Hey, great to be back. And uh, thanks again for being with us, Abby. Awesome. Love, love it. <laughs> I'm excited. It's a lot of fun. And the, man, I tell you, the first episode was so cool. Um, the five quick recap, have a professional email address, ins- insist on video uh, when possible. If you're having a Skype call, prepare for the call, ask a lot of questions, be on time. If you didn't catch that episode, get over there. Um, episode number 38. And so let's just dive right back in, Abby. What is uh, and again, just to if, if you didn't hear the first episode, Abby's a freelance copywriter. She, her business is growing. She's now hiring writers. And these are her notes to writers that she interviewed, about a dozen writers, uh, things, little things they screwed up that might have cost them the gig that you want to avoid. So we're on to number six, Abby. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so number six was a really interesting one that I wouldn't have expected, but actually happened uh, quite frequently, especially with, with some of the newer writers. And that's self-deprecating, uh, when you're in a interview, whether this is a job interview or a client interview, like it was with me. Uh, but I would ask people the first question, which everybody should be able to answer was, okay, well, I don't know much about you. Tell me a little bit about your background or, you know, what you're looking for. So, so this is a question you're going to get asked by every client, every job interview, anything. Uh, and a lot of times people would answer things like, well, I'm really new to copywriting. I haven't had a lot of clients, uh, so I'm I'm trying to figure this out. uh, But I'm really excited, and I've read a lot of books. And and I'm like, like that's how you're that's how you're selling it. (laughs) Like it it was just amazing to me, and it happened so many times on so many calls where people were revealing to me that they're they're brand new copywriters. And yeah, yeah, I tell you, you know, you know why people are doing that, right? It's because they're they're scared. And they want to allay their fear by just calling it out, right? Yeah. The problem is that's not how this game works. Uh, it's not like you have to lie or fake it till you make it type thing. But you can fake it a little until you <laughs> until you, you you get to get like be a hundred percent honest about this is how long I've been doing this, and um, I want to be clear about the experience I do have that I think can help us here, and and also the things I'll, I'll need your guidance on, but here's where I feel strong about how I can help you, right? All right, so yeah, would this be a, a place where you guys on the last episode, you said ask a lot of questions, so would you be able to offset this by saying, hey, can I just ask some more questions about your project and shoot into two or three questions so that they get a better understanding? Yeah, I think that that's a, a definite opportunity. Um, you know, there's a version of my background where I fell into copywriting by luck, you know, and I, I never share this on client calls where I'm like, well, actually, I kind of stumbled my way into it and it turns out I'm pretty good at it. Um, you know, the, the version that I tell really depends on what the project is. So definitely asking like, yeah, I'll tell you a whole bunch about my background, but, you know, what is it exactly you're looking for? And maybe I can fill in how I can help. And, uh, you know, like I have a little bit of a background in journalism, which means I'm really good at writing concisely. So if it's a project where that's highly valued, I talk about that part of my background. Uh, I worked in corporate marketing, so I kind of understand that side of things too, uh, which could be a benefit. So it really, you know, asking those questions, can, you can hone in. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode, the guy that had the medical background. Now that for most clients probably isn't something that's relevant, but for me, it just happened to be. So when he said, Oh, you know, actually I studied medicine. 
um, by asking questions and getting to that, it was like, wow, you know, a copywriter that understands medicine, that happens to be exactly what I'm looking for. So, right. Yeah. Great point. And so again, focus on the abilities you do have, not what you don't have. It's okay to be scared. It's not okay to act scared because that's a huge turnoff worse than a hotmail address. Yeah. <laughs> or AOL. <laughs> <laughs> that's the AOL of confidence. Right. <laughs> All right, what is that number seven on our list, Abby? Yeah, so number seven, I, I realize both of these, number six and number seven, are not just uh, freelancer advice, but any job interview, if you happen to be interviewing for a job too, but talking bad about your previous clients. So I had a couple people that I think, because I'm a copywriter and because I understand their frustrations, and there's definitely a place where we would have that conversation about, oh man, I just finished up with this project with his client. He's driving me nuts. He's like changed things a thousand times. There's a place for that. But when I'm hiring you, like that's not the place for it. So even if your client was like really the worst client ever in the back of my head, in the back of any client's head, they're going to think, wow, like was the problem actually her? Like was she (laughs) the one that caused all this problem? Because what if I have edits on my copy? Is she going to be really irritated about that? Uh, So just there's not a there's not a good time to be talking bad about previous clients, previous employers, you know, how miserable you are with your current client or your current job. Yeah. It, just, it really is a turnoff. That's a great point. You know what it reminds me of is it, it actually goes both ways. This is like you said, this is kind of just a character issue in, in general, right? Like the, like you said, there's a behind the scenes, you've got your group of friends that you can just vent to and like get it out. Uh, and that's fine, but there really isn't ever, um, a, a good time to go negative when there's an option not to, you know right. what I'm saying? There, you, this is something I noticed as I ascended in, in the business world. And I started getting around more and more people who were really successful. I noticed there was a lot less bitching Yeah, <laughs> and people just instinctively took the high road on stuff. And, uh, you know, um, I was on a call recently where a guy um, was talking about a former employee of his, and uh, it didn't end perfectly, but I noticed this person in several instances looking for the high road and never once uh, talked it, uh, negatively about that person. He just yeah. said, this is how it went, and it may not have been perfect, but it is what it is, and we're fine, so we're moving on. How can you help, right? And I thought... This shows a lot about his character and it it just makes you want to work with that person on either side of the table. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and you see that even in the, um, in the different groups, like we've talked, uh, before Kevin about the difference, uh, with copy chief with other, uh, copywriting groups out there, uh, especially the free ones. And, and the ones where the, the less successful people hang out, are much more negative than like copy chief where there's a lot of successful actually working copywriters. Like you don't see a lot of that. Uh, and so I think it's really indicative of successful people aren't, you know, looking for the negative or dwelling on it. Right. They're looking for the lesson and all right, we'll do that again. And what's a better way. Right. So great, great point. Yeah. No, don't, don't go negative. Like it's just, it's never going to help you. No one's going to hire you because, oh my God, the way you ranted about that former client was hilarious. <laughs> I have to have you. Like that's, it was like a roast. <laughs> the reason. You know where I use this guys that it's uncommon, but I started using this is in my rentals. Like if somebody comes in and bitches to me about their landlord, their last landlord, I think instantly, all right, you're not a fit because anybody that does that is not going to be the right person to be around. Yeah, for sure. It's victim mentality, right? They think they were wrong. They're looking to be wronged again. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Great. All right. What is next? Number eight is the big money question. So we talked a little bit about in the last episode about how to how to deal with pricing, but I found something really fascinating. And I don't know if I, I was scared to actually put this on a list because I was like, I don't know if it makes me a bad person. But uh, I had for a few of the writers that I was impressed with on the call, I offered test projects to them, you know, like, hey, you know, I think we might be a fit. Um, 
here's a small project. Let's see how it works out. And if it works out, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Not one single person asked to be paid for the test project. And I was fully expecting to pay them. Mm. But w- when they didn't ask for it, I was like, well, I'm not going to offer them money if they're going to do it for free, you know, which, yeah. like I said, maybe that says something <laughs> about me. <laughs> but I think that's going to be true of most clients. If, if you have a client and they say, hey, you want to do a test project? And then you say, okay, yeah, let's figure out the budget for the test project. I totally agree. Let's do something small before we dive into your bigger project. You know, here's what I charge or, you know, I'll get together a proposal for the test project. And then that client comes back and says, uh, no, I'm not going to pay you for the test project. It, that's a huge red flag to not work with that client because if they're, that means mm. they're looking for free work. Yeah. But like be your own advocate and, and ask for money when you're going to do work. Like there's no reason to do work for free, even with a test project, you know, get a small fee for, for a small project. It, mm. it puts everybody on a better playing field, I think. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. Um, and frankly, not one I would have even expected because I think what people get confused is in our industry, the, people do ask for spec assignments, right? And there's, there's always a discussion about this, whether you should do them, whether it's fair to ask people. And if you don't know a spec assignment is, hey, write something reasonable um, for free and let me just see how, I, you know, it's one thing for you to show me your samples. I want to see how you think in a particular situation, right? Or I want to know this is you writing today. You didn't you didn't score big once six years ago, and that's still your one sample, right? Right. Um, and so I, I think in in some circles, there's a lot of arguments on either side of it about whether you should write for free or not. But I love this idea of because it is indicative. Like if you're afraid to ask to be paid for a test project. Uh, chances are you're going to be at a disadvantage psychologically when it comes to asking for your fee. You're probably undercharging if that's the case, right? Yeah. Um, and so maybe one way to phrase that, because I think people would hear this and say, yeah, but gosh, that's going to be awkward if they're asking me for spec and I'm asking for money. So maybe you could just not assume and say, well, well, what we, what do you pay for a test project? You could say, okay, just to be clear, is this a is this a paid test project or are you asking me to write you a, a spec assignment? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And if that conversation had happened at all, you know, it, it wasn't a huge fee. Basically what I had them do is write a, a short blog post um, in a particular voice. That was the test project that I, I gave most often, you know, and it wasn't like I was going to be, you know, paying them thousands of dollars or anything. It was just, you know, hey, you're you're doing work for me. I'm, if the work is good enough, I'm going to use it. Um, I'm getting paid for it from my client. And so, you know, for you doing fair. the work, you, yeah. you deserve something of that. So, yeah, cool. Interesting. That's a great one. OK, cool. Don't be scared of money. Number eight. Hey, producer Jonathan here. And I know I'm interrupting the program, but it is for a very good reason. If you are not already a member of Copy Chief, then you probably should be. And if you go to the website right now, you can get on the waiting list and maybe get a spot when we open, or you can do the smart thing. Right now, today, you can join Copy Chief by going to copychiefradio.com and you can skip the line. No waiting list. But I got to warn you, you'll only have 30 minutes from the time you land on copychiefradio.com to join. And that's so we don't have any time wasters or scragglers. So make sure that you're absolutely ready. Then go to copychiefradio.com today and join. All right. What is, uh, what's number nine? So number nine is super simple thing that just nobody does. And I cannot figure it out. And I, I've known this even before these interviews, uh, just people don't follow up and like follow up in so many ways when you're growing a business, just make or so breaks you. So even if you meet somebody that you want to work with or you, you know, a mentor or somebody that you want to get to know, you know, sending them one email and then being irritated that they don't email you back, like doesn't get you anywhere. Just follow up. And there was a couple people that I had said, Hey, you know what? I got a thousand things going on this week. I've got like 12 of these interviews that I'm doing. Um, so, uh, my, actually my project manager was out of town when I was doing all these interviews. So I said, you know, can you follow up with me sometime next week? Uh, cause I want to continue the conversation about X, Y, and Z. 
but I just don't have the bandwidth to do it right now. And even when I had specifically told people to do that, they, they didn't do it. And it just was really surprising to me because I'm like, that's where the money is, is in the follow-up. Uh, so it was, it was just a, an amazing thing that so few did it. And the ones that did, I remembered, you know, so. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, again, you, you could see that as a little test for somebody say, listen, could you get back to me on this specific day and remind me to, um, you know, uh, that we need to follow up on this or we can book our next call. And it's a simple organization skill. Uh, yeah. And there's, there's tons of like, if you feel like you're going to forget, there's tons of different programs that you can do. I think even Gmail now has that functionality where you can bring stuff back to your, uh, inbox like for free, but there's like, yeah, boomerang. Uh, yeah. and then there's tons of, you know, super cheap paid apps that'll do that too. That'll remind you or put a reminder in your iPhone and <laughs> the reminder thing to pop up and say, Oh, Hey, email Abby or whatever. Yeah. And then when you follow up, there's a right way to follow up too, especially when it's a busy person or a client that you know is got a lot on their plate. Um, instead of following up saying, Hey, you told me to follow up, here I am. Um, being really specific and saying, Hey, we talked about uh doing a project uh for such and such. Uh was wondering if that was still you know something that you were looking for. If so, I'd love to get on the call. And then I can remember exactly what I talked about with that person. Because there was a couple too that followed up and said, Hey, just following up. What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't remember. Uh, what <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fair thing. Like, like they're the busy uh, p- potential client. You're the person wanting uh, to work for them. So, take charge. Take leadership on the follow up and be clear and specific. Again, these are all little character things, little definite character definitions that mm-hmm. go a long way in in people deciding whether they want you in their world. It, it goes far beyond just the black and white of what, what they're asking you to do here. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point to make about all these is could people have done these and been really great copywriters? Like, yeah, it's very possible that some of these people that I didn't hire that I missed out on somebody that could have been really great for me, mm-hmm. but I have no other way of deciding or no other way of getting information yeah. about you except for what you present. And that's the way clients are too is they don't know you. They don't know that, okay, you're having a bad week and you're forgetting all this stuff, but you're really great. You know, they only know what they see. So, you know, making sure that all these things are just indicating signs to me of whether or not we're going to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And what's it going to be? Is this person going to have my back on the project or is my going to have to be chasing them all all around, which is a a big part of it. And again, I just want to point out a little, a little, a uh, little plug here for a previous episode we did with you and Casey, your project manager, about you know how to manage a project as a freelancer. Like some great tips on little stuff we can do that make the project go smoother. That look, if it's not your nature to be super organized, you're going to need a list like this and just keep it right next to your computer. And a lot of the things you can set up and automate, like we were talking about with the email follow ups, like check ins along the way on the project so that, you know, you don't get these confusing, Hey, what the hell's going on here moments that yeah. just create more frustration than, than they need to. So what, I don't know if we don't know that episode offhand, but again, just, you know, ah, very nice, Jonathan. There you go. Producer at large episode number 25 <laughs> is, is where Abby and Casey laid out that, that list. Okay, great. So here we are two left number 10. Yeah. So this is back to the test project idea. So the test project is what I'm using to judge if we should work together. So do really good work. Uh, I was just surprised at a couple of the test projects that I got back that were, that were late or, uh, I had like one that I actually sent over. I had a SOP, a standard operating procedure for like very detailed on exactly the steps that I wanted them to take. And they just ignored it, <laughs> just did a totally different thing. And it just wow. was baffling to me. You know, I'm like, this is what I'm deciding on. You know, this is, this is it, you know, so really pour your heart into the test projects. Um, I had a really big client that's really well known uh, in the space that most of the listeners will probably know the name. But they had given me a test project uh, that was to write a guest post to go on like yahoo.com or something. 
And so pretty simple, straightforward thing. And I spent an entire weekend working on that. I probably put like 20 hours into this. Now, will I put 20 hours into every blog post that I'm going to write? Probably not. But this, I knew this was, this is what they were using. So, uh, you know, I just went above and beyond making sure that I had, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's on the test project. Uh, and ended up working with this guy for, you know, three years. So, you know, th- I just was just really surprised uh, at some of the quality that I got back. Not that the writing was bad, but just the, the, the care put into it. Yeah, the care put into it. That's the thing. And again, it just goes down to make this part of your DNA. Because here's the thing. Even if you don't plan to freelance forever, that shouldn't be what you're thinking of right now. You can't yeah. do anything half-heartedly. It's like, you know, with a, if, if ex, extreme sports, you know how you get hurt? by hesitating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like parkour or something. Like the people who can climb up walls and do backflips and all that, they just they go for it. They're never going, "Uh, should I be doing a backflip off this wall?" <laughs> Cuz that's <laughs> when you land on your head, right? Yeah. And so you should go you should go about business the same way. Everything in front of you is an opportunity to kick ass because that's how you roll always no matter what. And if that's the case, Now it's up to the client to live up to how you do things. And that means you're only going to accept the right clients into your life and you're going to continue to grow. So again, this is not about you adhering to the man and hoping to impress people. I know a lot of freelancers have authority issues. Make the authority yourself and set your own high bar of criteria so that you deserve only the best clients. Yeah. Yeah. That was oh. deep, man. <laughs> so, how, wow. Parkour. We don't know what's going on. There's, there's, there's people falling on their heads. All right, here we are. Uh, the big finale, number 11. Yeah, so this, uh, we talked a little bit about money and not being scared of it. And part of that is not undercharging, like sticking to your guns on what you think that you're worth. Uh, and so I had a One of the people uh, that I interviewed, I was so impressed with her. I was impressed with her on the call. She did a great job on the test project. And I was like, hey, you know, um, the test project is actually, I have a whole bunch of these that are exactly like this. What would you charge to do this in the future? And the number she gave back to me was almost twice as much as what I'm getting paid from my (laughs) client. So obviously I was outsourcing something. So I wanted to pay somebody less than what I was getting paid to do do this work for me. And so I was like, oh, man, <laughs> it's nowhere close to where I wanted to be. So I came back at her and explained this to her. And, and I was fully expecting, she's a fairly new writer. So I was fully expecting her to be like, oh, okay. I said this much and you're asking for a quarter of that. And I, I'm going to say yes. And so hmm. I, I emailed her back and said, look, this is the situation. There's no way I can pay what you're asking. Here's what I'm willing to pay. And she said, well, that stinks Well, that we're not a good fit. I was really looking forward to this. Um, may I suggest, uh, I know the writers out there exist that will be paid that are in your budget. Uh, I'm not one of them, but hey, you should check here and here and uh, maybe maybe they'll be able to help you out. And I was like, wow. I'm like, that is awesome. I'm like, yeah. maybe I should be charging my clients more. It was just, I was really impressed. And so she's now on my list of, you know, when the budget goes up or when I have a project with a bigger budget, she's the person that I want to go to because I was just impressed with her from start to finish. So stick to your guns on that. Um, you know, it may not pay off immediately. You may lose that gig, but you know, that gig might be worth losing. Yeah. Again, you're setting your own criteria and the right people will come to you. And then Abby, you might be recommending her to somebody who can afford a a little more, right. Who has a bigger budget. So great. Wow. Well, Abby, what an amazing list. This is super help. Really cool of you to take the time out of your busy schedule and do this knowing how desperately, So many freelancers need it. So really appreciate it. Yeah. I just, you know, if one more person can, uh, can can not go through what I went through with uh, radio silence with, you Mm -hmm. know, clients in the beginning, that'd be great. All right. And it's on life and writing.com on life and writing.com is where you can find Abby or Google Abby Woodcock. There's probably not a million of them out there. And, um, (laughs) thanks again for doing this. Jonathan, take us home, baby. All right, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Do we recap those last, or should you guys want to uh, recap it? If you want to, if we got <laughs> yeah, time. You, of course. Yeah. All right, uh, six, don't be self-deprecating. Nobody wants to hear that. Uh, number seven was don't bitch. 
about your former employers or anything else for that matter. Number eight, ask for money. Don't be afraid. Number nine, follow up. One email is not enough. Number 10, do a test project and do your best with it so that you shine. And number 11, my favorite, don't undercharge. So good stuff. And we will be back in your earbuds next time. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Copy Chief Radio. If you like what you heard here and you want more, go to copychiefradio.com. This is the podcastfactory.com. 